let's talk about solar thermal. It's been a lovely day, all that heat energy. Now then, for solar thermal to work, you need daylight. Not sunlight, daylight. Roughly 1,500 hours a year can go towards solar thermal energy. That's free hot water. Right, solar panels. Let's talk about the actual products themselves. So this solar panel is a good solid type. It's not the most efficient, but it's a good durable type. So every solar panel, the glass is low iron content. The reason why it's low iron, so it doesn't corrode, doesn't pitter, doesn't fade. Aluminium paneling. Now then, this black paint is called Muracell paint. And Muracell, what it does is it absorbs the heat. Here we have something called etching technology. So what the etching technology is, it means the sunlight hits it and doesn't reflect off. And that makes it a lot more efficient panel. So like 7% more than average panels. Underneath, you can see the Rockwell insulation. We use Rockwell so it doesn't corrode. Now in these panels, they're rigorously tested. Um, harsh conditions, freezing, they get pressure jets fired at them, um, gale force winds are thrown at them, so they can handle harsh weather. This type of solar panel is the most efficient. Okay, so here we go. So this one is a heat tube. Again, the glass is low iron, so it's durable, it doesn't corrode, it doesn't fade. With all tubes, what you'll find just here is a barium paint. The reason why that is there, so it tells you whether or not the gases have corroded or leaked. So inside this copper tube is, well we call this an evaporator, it's a form of mist gas. So when it gets hot, the heat goes up to the heat bulb. If this heat tube, this evaporator leaks, the barium silver paint fades. So it's a good indicator. That paint there, again, it's etching technology, so it absorbs all the heat. Now, sometimes what you'll find on some panels, behind them, there'll be a mirror and a mirror. That's when the sunlight hits it, the reflection from the both mirrors will multiply the heat as well. Right, let's talk about the design of solar thermal briefly. So, first thing, when you go to fit solar panels on the roof, just consider shade. You know, there's no point in fitting them on a roof if you've got a huge tree or a tower above it. Um, you've got the wind factor to consider as well. So, if you've got wind coming over and hitting the roof, this could be well bracketed, hasn't it? Look at the manufacturing instructions. Within a metre of the edge of the roof, the shaded area, you really want to avoid having the panels. Okay. You've got to be five meters away from a boundary. As a rough rule of thumb, when you're designing solar thermal, for the cylinder, 100 liters plus 50 liters per person. So there's three in the household, you're, you're talking 250 liter cylinder. That's just for a guidance. When it comes to actually the alignment of the panel, the panel wants to be south, south facing, at an angle of 40 degrees. That's for the maximum efficiency. So the further away you are from being south, the further away you are from being 40 degrees, you're not getting the most efficiency from it. Right then guys, let's talk about the design and the install of solar. Now the thing with solar, it can actually get to 250 degrees, so some key factors there you've got to consider. So there's the panel. When you want to search for the rafter, use a metal detector. The rafter's going to be at least 5 centimetres, 50 mil thick. And you've got to consider 
will that rafter last the duration of the, of the panel? So here's the return. The return comes to the pumping station. Now, and because of the sheer heat of the hot water, the solar hot water, here you've got a pumping station. So you've got the pump on the return lock. You've got an expansion vessel. So here you've got a pipe going to the expansion vessel and it comes down. That's a cooling vessel. So basically that absorbs all the heat for the expansion. This pipe here, going to the cooling vessel, is uninsulated, so it's not lagged. So any heat loss will go through there. Here you have the expansion vessel. It's got an earpring diaphragm in. Sometimes these can have baffles in to absorb the heat to protect it. Here you have the PRV. Solar thermal works at 2 bar. It expands at 6 bar, so it's 4 bar they allow for expansion. So here you've got the PRV, the pressure release valve. The pipe comes off internally, and here is a temperature-rated container. As the pipe goes inside, there's 25 mil of glycol inside. So if this does blow off at 250 degrees, there's water in it to cool it down. Now, another major factor as well is solar thermal, because it gets so hot, if you were to install this, take the cover off, you could burn yourself. If you take the cover off and you fill it with water, you'll get a flashback. So basically, if this is on the roof, you take the cover off, you pump the water in, it'll come back as steam and scold you. So whenever you install this type of system, you always leave a cover on to protect it from overheating. Whenever you go to install it as well, you do not use PTFE, you use hemp. You don't use copper olives, you use brass. You don't use plastic clips, you use metal clips. You can't use speed fit and you can't use end feed, okay? So let's talk about testing and servicing. So every year you wanna check for leaks, check the pressure, look at the panels, check they're secure, check there's no dirt on them. So the next thing is to check the water, the glycol inside. The glycol is vital because that stops the system from overheating. You want to get the efficiency from the panel. So here we go. pH level has got to be above 7. So the litmus paper, you dip in a water sample and you check it's above 7. That will tell you if there's any bacteria in the glycol. So it's very vital that it's above 7. Next thing is to get a refractometer. Check it really wants to be about minus 20. So if there's any severe weathers, your system protected because the last thing you want is a flat panel or a heat tube pinholing or bursting. When you fit the system, you connect your power flusher onto the pump station and you purge it around for half an hour. And you do that to get all the micro bubbles out because if you have air in your glycol, it'll deteriorate the glycol and rot and corrode it and that's where your problems will be. So then, when you're at the design stage as well, you've got to consider the cylinder. So for solar thermal, you've got to have the correct cylinder. So this is a cylinder, especially for solar thermal. So the solar coil goes to the bottom. The reason why it's at the bottom, so you can make the most out of the free energy. And the reason why it's at the bottom as well, is because the top half, that's, that acts as a safety feature. So the top half, that absorbs all the excess heat. Because don't forget the panel, it to over 100 degrees so there you go solar coil your boiler coil and you want to design it as well so you're leaving at least 20 to 30 percent expansion the coil needs to be about 10 percent of the solar panel coil area as well